This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a country. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Still a cover, turn of Ted versus the FCC. Bad jokes on the way and a very special announcement concerning Men's Room Red Festival. Stay tuned for that, but you'll our question. What was the one smell that you'll never forget? 844-999-OLAG. Hello, Sean. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. All right. So, anyways, I was at the bar and uh, I was doing karaoke and we ended up uh, doing a duet with this one girl. But so, wait, what you know, song did you sing when you did a duet? Cheryl Crow and Kid Rock. Picture. <laughs> All right. You're such a romantic. It was. All right. So uh, we hit it off and everything and uh, started getting drinks and we ended up coming back to my house. So when we got back to my house, you know, the clothes started coming off and everything and uh, everything started going on and I started noticing the smell. And uh, it kind of smelled like a, a, a warm turtle tank, I guess you could say. A warm what? A warm turtle tank. Oh, you mean like <laughs> like if you had turtles in an aquarium? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, okay. correct, That's, correct. Yeah, correct. That is always the that. smell did, I hope that did you You have, are so lucky. Did you have turtles? How do you know the smell? Uh, I had friends that had turtles anyways. All okay. right. Okay, so it smelled but like... That, that, that wasn't even the smell. All right, so I got over that, and, you know, I put the old hard hat on, and I, I did what I had to do, and uh, ended up passing out. So, like, I don't know, maybe two, three hours later, I felt something warm under the covers. So, you know, I I thought maybe she was, like, reaching over and... Trying to get that going on again. Leg right. or whatever. And uh, that's when I peeled the covers back. And, uh, yeah, she uh, defecated all in my bed. <laughs> Wait, the woman you took home and had sex with also pooped in your bed. Correct. Did yeah. it still smell like the warm turtle tank? No, it smelled worse. <laughs> she was on, like, based off the fecal matter, I would say uh, she was on a liquid diet for probably a couple days. Oh. 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 <laughs> was this an attractive uh Sounds like it, woman? Miles. Oh, it, it, it was horrible. <laughs> I know. I That's got to be like the kid rock part of that was, song. Was this a one and done? <laughs> uh, no dates ever again? Maybe take her out so, for a chili dog? She's my wife. Well, a chili dog. Oh, my God. No, so uh, I took her upstairs, and we got cleaned up, and I got her an Uber ride home. I tried to call her the next day, you know, and no, she never answered. Yeah, her burner phone died. She blew you off. You're not good enough for her. Apparently. I, I knew I loved her when she pooped in my bed. I like well, the fact that she I smelled said, like a turtle aquarium. Yeah, it's warm a turtle. very warm, a warm turtle <laughs> tank. Right. Warm turtle tank. God. In her defense, would, if you crafted somebody's bed, would you answer their phone call the next day? I think think probably not, but I would be yeah. shocked that someone would call me if I did poop in their bed. The you know what? Day. I would, but I tried to act like, you know, do the yellow. Uh, hey, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you, man. Did you wash your sheets? Yeah. I ain't sleeping in that bed. I, it's nasty. I owe you some sheets, don't I? I did what? What was the one smell that you'll never forget? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Vince. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, bud. Hola. 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 Yeah, the the worst smell. I mean, I work in construction, so there's been a lot of bad smells just all around. But, uh, I assume you're talking about your coworkers? Well, yeah, you know, chocolate lemonade truck coming on the job site and <laughs> emptying it out. <laughs> mm, okay. Chocolate lemonade truck. <laughs> right. Man, oh, man, you put a positive spin on that gig. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was getting dope sick one time, you know, trying to better myself, and the worst smell is just, you know, your body just taking out everything bad that's inside of it. How oh many days God. did that take? Minimum three. And what, do you just sit in a bed and shake and sweat? Uh, man, imagine all your limbs just on fire and ten times worse than the flu. Do you do this yeah. yourself, man, or do you have someone there with you? I mean, I just can't imagine doing all of that alone without just relapsing. Uh, unfortunately, it's been a couple times, but the last time I went to a clinic, but yeah, sometimes I just do it all on my own and you got to tough it out. 
What does it smell like? Does it smell more like chemicals, or how would you describe it? Dude, it smells like you went to a chili cook-off with some bad hot wings and everything in between. <laughs> so is it the sweat? <laughs> is it what's coming out of your bowels? Like, what is it that smells the worst? Yeah, it's pretty much the bowels, and then uh, your body just emanates. Like, when you sweat it all out, your body just emanates a horrible stank. Like, it's like the chocolate lemonade truck coming to the job site. <laughs> all right. Yeah, uh, the pooper. And like when, when, when the caregiver, whoever's there, when they come in, they I guess they smell it and they know what you're going through, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, last time I was at a hospital, you know, there's like a, they gave me a little toilet thing to sit in. I, I felt bad for the guy, but he knew what he signed up for. And I was just, <laughs> I was like, bring me another one. The guy was just so bummed out. How, uh, how long have you been clean now, man? Uh, 60 days as of yesterday. Nice. All right. And after you go through that, I, and you said you've gone through this a couple times. Are you at the point now where you, you don't want to even just go through that again enough to where it's worth trying or, or <sighs> relapsing? You know what I'm saying? Are those three or four days, are they bad enough where it's like it's ju- the high's not worth it? You know what? Um, yeah, it's pretty bad. I even uh, I'd done some work for a, a doctor, and he had some problems where he had to get you know uh, Percocet prescribed to him. And you know, he was on it for a week, and he said he thought he was going to die. Yeah, it's it's bad, man. It's just it's no good. You mean because he, because he because, more than that. because he thought he was going to get hooked again? No, like just withdrawing. He oh. you just take him for like a regular week. prescription responsibly for a week. How did you get hooked? Did it start because look, man, just look. And look, I am a fan of drugs. I have been a fan of drugs, but certain ones I won't touch. Heroin's one of them. Meth's one. I'm cracked. And and part of the reason is. You know, any other drug that someone tells you about, right? And they can tell you about acid. And I'm not asking you to do it, but what you will hear is 95% of the story is pretty upbeat, pretty positive, not a lot of residual yeah. effects. 5% are negative, right? And you but, don't do acid every day. Right, and you don't do it every day, right? And they don't need yeah, it. But, but with, like, a, yeah, heroin, exactly. crack, and meth, man, like, I've just, I've never heard a good, the only good story I ever seem to hear from those is when you actually beat the habit. You know what? Uh, I was a regular user uh, user of heroin. It all started with like pills and sure. You know, then the doctor started cr- uh, cracking down on that and heroin, and then fentanyl was the last thing. Man, that's, wow! So you have done I mean, that? Did you, you didn't do that intentionally, did you? Yeah, you did. So you knew what you okay. were getting into. Yeah, I mean, it's like you know, heroin can last you through a day, and then fentanyl. It's like you can withdraw within three hours. It's it's such a high high and low low. It's, wow. Okay. All right. And do you smoke yeah, cigarettes? Uh, I do. Yeah. Oh, I'm right there with you, man. man. That's, that's to me that that one is the one. I mean, you're not doing heroin 20 times a day. You're not. No. You don't know that. Yeah. yeah. Doing 26 a day. That's what I'm saying. Well, I was. Oh, yeah. I did 26 a day for like 20 some years, and I'm on like day 20 some right now, and I'm still losing my goddamn mind. But it's impossible to to quit. It's just hard. Right. And I haven't smoked. It's just one of those things where like. I don't want to go through the shakes in those three or four days again where I'm just like, I couldn't even think. I Look, couldn't even I I'm still a see. smoker. And uh, recently I was in the company of someone who, as I stepped into their home, they went, oh, man, I can smell it. I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, you obviously just had a cigarette. I said, oh, yeah, I did, man. You know, sorry if I stink. They said, well, you know, I haven't smoked in however long. In fact, I'm on Chantix. I said, oh, you know, good for you. So I'm feeling bad, right? You know, because like, mm-hmm. oh, man, would it bother you if I asked you for one? Wouldn't bother me. Are you sure? He's like, yep. There we go. We lit up. Yep. Well, it's the like, thing is, damn. if I could have one every once in a while, that would be fantastic. But you can't. I just can't right. do that. I have to smoke a freaking pack every day. Well, isn't it your dad that like <clears throat> smoked like two, literally like two a day or something? My dad? Didn't somebody? No, smoke? man. My father, somebody he used to I smoke do. about a pack a day. Maybe it was a number buddy of mine. I, I swear to God, I knew somebody like literally their dad would like smoke one in the morning and like smoke one in the evening. It was just like. How did he pull that off? That would be awesome. I don't know. Yeah, that, that would, would be really great. be great. Yeah. It really would, because you could take your morning, you know, uh, you take your morning dump. Nope, right. And then when you're in the evening, comes around, man, just be able to kick back, relax, have that one cigarette. And it's almost like, I don't know. I wish I was responsible enough to be able to do that every once in a while, but I'm even afraid to have a cigar, any kind of tobacco. I just, I know for a fact I'll, I'll start smoking again. But that's kind of the point of why they sell them. Oh, absolutely, yeah, man. cigarette, like rolled cigarettes you know what i mean like they add extra stuff in there like he, they don't want you to get off and again, no. you know of course they don't <laughs> like i would always say a doctor doesn't want to cure you they don't want you to stop smoking cigarettes like you lose money if things work right so but but again the one thing about cigarettes I swear, more than anything else it's like that is the brand you're most loyal to the thing that you know you should do the least and i'm very aware of the this, thing that will kill you is the brand anyway brand specific that i'm least likely to to break with so the thing i absolutely Positively, 
will never get a benefit from physically anyway. It's going to be Marlboro Red Cigarettes. But the one brand I will absolutely hunt down and find is Marlboro Red. If you don't have my beer, I get a different beer. You don't have my tequila, I'll get a different tequila. Yeah, we have right. different dryer sheets, maybe a different soap. I'll be, you know, hell, you're using a woman's razor because you can't find yours somewhere. Like, all that stuff with a cigarette, like, yeah, I got to go mm-hmm. buy. I have to yep. go get my own. That's it. And it's crazy because it's the worst possible thing I'm doing to myself, but it's the, the one thing I'm most loyal mm-hmm. to. It is. You're right. I drink beer all the time. If it's just not my brand, like, all right, like, just give me another beer. Whatever. whatever. Right. You're like, yes, we're not like, I'll okay. take a different IPA. It's no yeah. big deal. I mean, hell, you leave it. But even if you go to the store and they're out of your favorite brand, you're like, F it, I'll just buy the summer. If they don't have my cigarettes, I will go to a different store. I'm so geeky, I downloaded an app. And it basically, like, will send you alert, like, you might be able to feel your hands today. <laughs> you're right. Seriously, I'm reading these updates like, Wow. That's something else. How many days has it been as of today? <laughs> 27, not 27. Counting. See, that's exactly mm-hmm. what Ted said yesterday. An addict counts by days. Oh, absolutely you do, man. Because <laughs> right. you're thinking about every delicious cigarette that you haven't smoked. What was the uh, one smell that you'll never forget? We've got your emails coming up at the men's room at mensroomlive.com. Also, don't forget, Brian Thorpe is in a very special announcement on the way concerning Men's Room Red Festival. Ted versus the FCC. Bad jokes and the shot of the day. That is all coming up. But you'll us right after the break. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Oh, God. Very special announcements uh, coming up concerning Men's Room Red Festival. Stay tuned for that. But first time for a few emails here from the men's room at mensroomlive.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. Uh, let's see if there's any worth of crap from today. Worst smell ever. Uh, just last night, had to take my son to the emergency room because he hadn't pooped in two days and was really complaining about stomach cramps. So they gave him an enema and brought in a portable chair toilet. No water, nothing to mask the smell he made. Uh, the room smelled like 50 dead elephants. Howdy, y'all. Growing up in Decatur, Illinois, there was a corn and soybean processing plant known as A.E. Staley. It covered quite a large area of southeastern Decatur. There were days when the wind would come from the southeast and blow to the northwest, which is where we live. The smell of that plant was at all times so putrid that you didn't want to go outside. The smell was always there as the plant operated 24-7, 365. As bad as it smelled, sometimes I still smell that smell, and it reminds me of my childhood hometown. Yay. That from the Bonnie Lake Cowboy. Guys, I was deployed in Thailand, and the color earlier on was right on. I've eaten the crap-smelling fruit, and it was actually pretty good. They put that S on everything, including ice cream. That Ooh. from uh, Steve Gunn. Worst smell I've experienced was cooked dead rats. We had a problem with rats That's... crawling into the engine bays of our cars during the winter a few years back. So naturally, we put traps out, which included poison. The poison definitely worked, but not before rats chose their final resting place to be in between the head pipes of my mom's car. When she started the car up the next day, the decomposing rats were cooked by roughly 1,000 degrees of heat, mm. and the smell <clears throat> poured through the heater vents and into the car. There is nothing that smells like dead rats. Rock on. That from Austin. 17, living in Alaska. Nice hot summer day. I was at my captain's house mending nets. He lived on a bluff overlooking the Nushagak Bay. Well, his mother or grandmother, I can't remember which one, had buried their tuba too long. Tuba, a.k.a. stinky heads, buried fish heads, led to rot, then dug up and eaten. Then she threw it over the bluff. Needless to say, the wind was blowing toward the bluff. Having to smell rotten fish while having to work was almost unbearable. Guys, uh, back when I had a reliable car while living in L.A., I took several trips to San Francisco and Washington, uh, taking the I-5 freeway. And it's the most direct route. And as anyone who's driven through this place will tell you, there's a 15-mile stretch between L.A. and the Bay Area that I dubbed S. Alley. The reason being that it's next to Harris Ranch, one of the largest cattle and manure farms. I swear, nothing works to keep that smell out of your car, not even setting your A.C. to recirculate and trying to hold your breath while speeding through it. So you guys at Red Festival, bitches. That from Bacon. Guys, one smell that my husband and I will never forget is the lovely, beautiful smell of childbirth. Not the essing on the table part, the amniotic fluid smell. My mom and husband were both standing there shortly after the doctor had to pop my thing to get things moving. Pop my thing. And the nurse said, oh, yeah. Hey, get in there and pop my thing. There's that hormony smell. And my mom, who grew up on a farm, said, oh, it smells just like a goat giving birth. Not sure if everyone smells like goat vagina or I'm just special, but 2.5 years later, we still remember it too clearly. You're that goat vagina lady. Hey! Uh, Guys, my brother... (laughs) Good to see you, GB! My brother borrowed my crab pots, and when he was done, he left them in his car over the Mm. weekend. He went to get in his car Monday, realized he had not cleaned the bait out. 
I wasn't even standing close, and I gagged. I watched the smell almost <laughs> physically knock him backwards. <laughs> that is the worst smell ever. Do we have some comments? Uh, chicken. We got a few. Mm-hmm. So worst smell ever, bear ass. The dog rolled in it. I had to wash the dog. Washed my hand in gasoline six <laughs> times. Took three weeks to get that stink off my hands. Mm-hmm. This one, again, it's just kids being kids. But my aunt's stepson, my aunt's stepson, was brought over to my parents' house, and the kid dropped a deuce in the trash can of the bathroom next to the toilet and then covered that up with toilet paper. Worst smell ever. We have time for a few extra emails here from the men's room at mensroomlive.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. Guys, it's my little brother Ken's birthday today. Can you give him a Joey Chestnut and some dirty Germans? Thanks, guys. That from Kevin. Joey Chestnut! Yeah, I'm sorry if I pissed you off. I want to do the exact opposite. Yeah, come over here. I'll feed you a little sour bratten. Guys, hoping I could get a uh, shout-out to my husband, Damon. Happy birthday shout-out for me, my best friend, baby daddy, partner in crime. Happy birthday, and thank you for always being the best. Perhaps you guys can insert some sexy German talk about his meat and or musk. Thank you guys from Elena. Yeah, if you had child with him, he must have been the, the star of the TV show. Broken Magnum P.I. Yeah, I wonder what I've noticed first. Your meat or your musk? Probably your musk. That. His meat is quite musky. Is it musky is his meat? They call him musky meat. Mm. Birthday shout out to Craig Allen, great friend, family member, and would do anything for anyone. He'd give you the shirt off his back. A little dirty German talk, maybe an owl hitting the window would be greatly appreciated. Cheers, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a construction, but I want to treat your forehead. Like a loading drop, so I can drop off a heavy load. Yeah, I hear you'll give me the shirt off your back. Will you take your pants off, too? Guys, today is my wife Marlene's birthday. She's a beautiful California girl with a mean Korean temper. Could you please give her turtle sex with a second up cupcake in the paws? She'll get the joke. That from Cristiano. So suck it up, cupcake! <laughs> Guys, want to wish my mom Natalie a happy birthday. She's the most amazing mother a girl could ask for. Can she get the birthday song and some dirty Germans? Thanks, guys, from her wonderful daughter, Mackenzie. Yeah, happy birthday, Mommy. Your vagina is my favorite Sesame Street character. Oscar the Pouch. Yeah, I hear your name is Natalie. Short for... (laughs) You could call you Nat, short for that. You know what I do to Nats? I smack them and swat them. Like your butt. Vengeance today marks my 28th trip around the sun, and due to mental health issues, I didn't think I'd make it this far. So it's a very special day. I'm going to big old Leroy Jenkins and the dirtiest Germans you can summon. Thanks for getting me through the day. That from Michael. Let's do this. Leroy Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and bet on black on your personal craps table. Yeah, since it's your birthday, I'm going to give you a special sticky stick. Guys, today's my brother James' 31st birthday. Can he get some turtle wax with a what the F is that, bro? And your penis is too small in the paws. You guys are hilarious. Keep it up. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That from Seth. Oh, my God. What the f*** is that, bro? All of you want to give a uh, birthday shout-out to Michael Burr. Let's give him a uh, laugh track, and then a your penis is too small. That from the uh, Bonnie Lake Cowboy and Amy, T. Moon, Krista, and Mike. <laughs> oh, Robin, and a company gentleman. I was wondering if I could get some turtle sex with your penis is too small in the break for my Uncle Aaron's 31st trip around the sun. Thanks, guys. That from Kelly. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, the Cholos want to wish my boyfriend Dean a happy birthday. He is 37 years old. How about an owl hitting the window and some dirty German talk? Love the show. Many thanks. That from Christina. Yeah, if you put some change in my corn purse, I'll slide 10 in your wallet. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to give you $10. It's going to be hard, like a roll of quarters. Hello, Michelle. Can I get turtle sex with Miles in the paw saying, Herky, Herky, the house is on fire. <laughs> and some wedding puke for my guy Jason's 38th. Uh, thanks, guys. And take care. That from Brian. Herky, uh, 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 Herky, the house is on fire. Uh, 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 
Brandon. Ah. Oh, Michelle, let's have about some very dirty German women talking about beer and schnitzel for my man Ben's 41st from his loving and very dirty German woman, Joan. Yeah, I'm sure if you provide the rod, they will hang the curtains. Yeah, you like beer and schnitzel? Well, you can, I can stuff my schnitzel into your phone. Gentlemen, today's my buddy Jason's 47th. Uh, please request some very dirty Germans. He's a commercial plumber, so I'm sure you guys can have some fun with that. Love you guys. Thanks so much. That from the lovely Mindy. Yeah, tonight we will do it German doggy style. You will sniff my butt, and I will bury my bone in your backyard. Yeah, speaking of burying things... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you can sneak sneak my tube. Guys, birthday shout out to my dad, Kent. He is fifty one years old, listens to the show every day, and especially loves the bad joke so much that he calls his mom to tell him all the favorites. Anyway, how about some turtle wax with the Leroy Jenkins in the paws? That from his son Michael. Uh, 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 Let's do this. Leroy! Yeah, yeah. Today's my grandpa Wally's 75th birthday. My sister and I just flew into Phoenix to visit him, and by the time you read this, we'll be fishing on the Colorado up at Lee's Ferry. How about some very dirty Germans? You guys rock. Thanks, guys. That from Josh. Yeah, I'm not much of an interior decorator, but I want to paint your insides white. <laughs> yeah, Wally, I very much enjoy you. I'll see you in Boston soon. All right, guys, here you go. <laughs> happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, 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 happy birthday to you, to you, to you, bitches. Yaws of Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's World Famous Sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, shrine of flies. Come on, guys, here. Uh, here's a nice one, guys. Y'all make my uh, shifts bearable. Uh, I really only uh, set my preset on my radio to 100.5. The cat here in Oklahoma City. Thanks, guys, for the laugh set from Chris, a.k.a. Memphis. Memphis uh, from Oklahoma. Memphis from Oklahoma. That is correct. Uh, my husband and I were introduced in a bar, as far as the story you need to tell about your relationship, almost 14 years ago by my mother. Three days later, we hooked up for a one-night stand that has not ended. Not from Leah. You guys really need to go to sleep then. That is a long night. Just get some sleep. Here's more on the relationship story. My wife and I divorced after 30 years of marriage. I tried dating. It sucked. We were still good friends and talked a lot more after the divorce, actually, than before. So we saw a counselor, and a year after the divorce, we were remarried. We remarried on the same date as our original wedding, so we That's wouldn't have smart. to remember a new anniversary. This June will mark our 7th, 38th anniversary. That from Dave. It's like okay. a dude who broke back into jail. <laughs> the only... <laughs> I mean, no, it's a lovely story. You have a high opinion of his wife. <laughs> wow. What? Damn. What? 30 wow. years? You got divorced, and a year later, like, let's just get back together. Yeah. <laughs> only thing, three square meals, a bed. <laughs> We're the only people that find each other attractive. Three hots and a cot. Guys, the only thing you need to know about our relationship is how we broke up. We got together and discussed how our life goals are completely opposite from each other. The fact that I want many children, well, he doesn't want any. And agreed cordially that we aren't long-term relationship material. We did agree to stay friends and are still on very good terms. I even recently gave him advice on how to approach someone he's romantically interested in, but nervous to approach since I was the one nervous to approach him when we were originally just friends. That from the lovely Melinda. Uh, my story happened three years ago in Astoria, Oregon, while doing a Goonies tour about puking and a strip club tour of the town. My friend and I proceeded to get a beer and shot at every single bar. How many strip clubs are in Astoria? I think I've only seen one or two maybe driving through there, but maybe there's apparently a lot more. I mean, I assume all of Oregon is full of strip clubs. Uh, in Astoria, I know Fort George Brewing is there, and I know there's a couple of bars, but well, well sounds like a pretty good tour. Anyway. So the next morning, we did the jail tour, and it was on site of a police station. I had to step out every five minutes to puke, and then it became lunchtime for the cops of the town. I puked so hard, I broke all the blood vessels in my eyes in front of a dozen cops. I was sure I was dying, but they just laughed. Not quite sure why they didn't do anything, but it was bad. But the rest of the trip, I just looked dead. Thanks, guys, for the entertainment, keeping me company on my commute. I'm jealous of your job and would be a, a dream to work with you guys. That from the lovely Emily. Very nice. All right, still to come on the program, the return of Ted versus the FCC. Uh -huh. We've got bad jokes, but yeah. first, ladies and gentlemen, Brian Thorpe rejoins us. It's been a long time. Brian, how you been, man? Everything uh, good? Good. We don't have okay, any applause for right. are good. good. No applause for good. Brian. I'm telling you, man. Uh, oh, they love him. There it is. Uh, that electric personality. It's like crackling in here. 
It's new and exciting. Uh, how are your Denver uh, Broncos going to be this year? Uh, probably bad. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh. Is, that what you're, is, that what you're honest, is that what you're honestly thinking? Uh, no. I, okay. I, I don't think they'll be much better than they were last year, but, um, okay. you know, Case Keenum, the future is... Is awesome. All right. Uh, Gotta wear shades. Brian, you're basically the business manager of the men's room. Uh, you do all things uh, financial. You cut all the checks. You, uh, you're you the big boss. You write everything. You put these events together. And uh, you have a very special announcement concerning the men's room uh, Red Festival. That is correct, Miles. Do we have the... Uh, He's the excited. Team? Yes. Greatest band in, in the world right here. Uh, it features outdoor drinking and other dumb stuff. Uh-huh. Of course. All right. Uh, so, yeah, tickets are on sale now at mensroomlive.com. Uh, other dumb stuff includes freestyle motocross, aerialists, belly dancers. Areola is. And the women that wear oh, teeny just, tiny pants. No, no, no. You no, see no. the areolas. Areola is. Yes. yes. Aerialists. Oh, oh. They come, they're, they're cool, the, too. Yeah. Can we get the areolas <laughs> um, as well? <laughs> I'll see if I can find them in the budget. That would be awesome. Yeah. Get Worst case, it'll ones. just be me and the areolas. I'll run yeah, around. Get oh, the quarter, hey. out, you know. Right. Areolas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there'll be some other weird stuff as well, such as maybe some areolas. <laughs> Live music all day. Over 20 beers, including Men's Room Original Red. And a portion of the net proceeds benefit the Fisher House. So. All right. So that's right now. We've just got. We've we're, right now. We're over twenty beers. We could get more. We, we'll, we'll we'll find out all the bands and bring. We'll get all at least twenty one beers. Okay. Twenty at least twenty one yeah, beers. 21. Oh, and you have that. to be twenty one or older, obviously, yeah. because it's going to be a whole day of uh, music and uh, other dumb stuff, outdoor drinking, and another. Uh, but this one's bigger. This one's better. More bands. More beers. More food. Uh, it's going to be a great more time. dumb stuff. Yeah, more exactly. dumb stuff. Yep. That's important. And uh, tickets just went on sale now, so you can pick those up at mensroomlive uh, dot com. And we were at Enum Claw. Expo Center last year, and it is an incredible venue, and we have a ton of room, man, and there's just a lot of good stuff out there, so come on down, man. It's going to be a good time. It'll be a fun time. I'll be there, so... Okay. You know, but it'll be hands. fun in spite of that. Yes, exactly. And it's a full day, man. It's a full day of outdoor drinking, and tickets are just $20. There's a premium VIP thing, and I know you get those guys set up when they get that package as well, so thanks for all the uh, hard work there, and more uh, information I'm sure to come on this deal. Yes. Okay. Brian What's Thorpe. the There we again? go. Red Festival, Saturday, June 23rd, Enum Claw yes. Expo Center, outdoor drinking, and other other dumb stuff. Again, join us. 20 bucks. Pick up the premium VIP passes to upgrade your day. Tickets to this 21 plus event are on sale now at mensroomlive.com. You can check out all the packages there. Right now, we definitely know we have the freestyle motocross going on. We have Aerialis. We have Aerialis. Belly dancers and more. Live music all day. You know the deal. And right now, as we sit, we have 20 beers available at Red Festival. That includes Men's Room Original Red. And you never know the fine folks at Elysian normally craft a, uh, a beer for us there, maybe for uh, an official They'll launch. Too, so, yeah. So. That's going to be a great time. All right. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate it. Hang on for one second, Brian. You want to leave? You know what we got to do? We got to go back in time. Time. To the last time we played Ted versus the oh, FCC. Oh, Let's go back oh, in time. Time. Shoops, ship, sup, loves, shoop, ships, soup. Shoops, ship, sup, sits, and sips. Shoops, ship, soup. Abracadabra. Three times fast. Shoops, ship, sup, loves, shoop, ships, soup. Shoops, ship. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, 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 last week was not good. Let's do it again. And now, everyone's favorite daytime game show, where one person could lose $325,000 and their job or win and walk away with nothing. It's time for oh, Ted versus oh, the FCC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, enough of that. You know the line we tell every week, leave it up all night. Uh, yeah, we hate to yeah, brag about yeah, though yeah, yeah, how hard yeah. we work on this stuff. But uh, lo and behold, we get uh, we get a listener submitted uh, Ted versus the FCC from John. I wish I had known that last night. Yeah. I wouldn't need so many Tide Pods. Me neither. Uh, John submission goes something like this. It's short and sweet to the point. Pushy, piercy, pierce together pieces of city sushi while shipping loads of sticky gum across the shifting salty seas. The way we do Ted versus the FCC is you got to read that one time through and then three times fast. All right. Pushy. Percy, Percy, <laughs> pushy Percy, pierced together pieces of city sushi while sh- shipping 
<laughs> loads of sticky gum across the shifting salty seas. Three times fast. Pushy Percy pierced together pieces of city sushi while shipping loads of sticky gum across the shifting salty seas. One. Pushy Percy pierced together pieces of city sushi while shipping loads of sticky gum across the shifting salty seas. Two. Pushy Percy pierced together pieces of city sushi while shipping loads of sticky gum across the shifting salty seas. <laughs> There's a way that Ted versus the FCC. All right, this is Bad Joke Time. Get him ready to go. 844-999. Ola, you can send us those uh, bad jokes on Twitter at Men's Room Live and email the bad jokes to the men's room at mensroomlive.com. We will take a break. The Drunken Charge, Ryan Castle, coming in to kick off the bad jokes next. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitchola. You have entered the men's room. Bad joke time, 844-999. Ola, you can send the bad jokes to us on Twitter at Men's Room Live and the emails at the men's room at mensroomlive.com. And away we go with the bad jokes. Hello, Sam. Welcome to bad jokes. Too small. Too small. So about a few months ago, I ran into this genie, and he told me I can grant you one thing. Either a larger penis or a better memory. So you know what I wish for? What? I don't remember. <laughs> Hello, Gray. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch, hola. Hola. I have wanted to say that since the buzz. Nice. <laughs> Zap. So, here's a joke for you. What's the difference between meat and fish? What is the difference between meat and fish? What? If you beat your fish, it dies. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Stephen Hawking only tell one-liners? Why does Stephen Hawking only tell one-liners? Because he couldn't do stand-up. <laughs> oh, my God. There you Too go, soon? Bad jokes. All right, and we made a wobble there to drink it time. <laughs> Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. Austin Hill! And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Three time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast an unidentified 60 to 70 year old man visiting a place in Spain whose name I cannot pronounce. Now, I don't know much about his physical health other than apparently he has mobility problems and as a result, he requires two caretakers for assistance. Unfortunately, neither of his caretakers could help him out of his predicament when before he got in the shower, he sat naked on a plastic folding chair. No big deal until he tried to stand up. That's when he found out that his testicles had dropped through the slats in the folding chair and neither he nor the caretakers can get them out. We're not sure what methods they tried, but they could not get his testicles out of the slats in the chair. And as you would imagine, he was not keen on the idea of calling for help. But at some point, they said, look, we either you're stuck to the chair oh, man. or we have to call help. So they called down to the hotel. The hotel said, this might surprise you. We're not equipped to deal with this. So they called the fire department. And not one, not two, but three fire engines responded to the scene. If that wasn't humiliating enough, it took them another half an hour to remove the slats from around his droopy satchel. He was treated for minor injuries, but he's expected to recover. Oh, man. They even took him to the hospital after that. That's like the worst thing that could happen to an old man. Why didn't they just warm warm him back up and stand up? Uh, man, but I, I think the problem is, however they rolled in, they rolled in, right? And, I mean, he's all an right. old man, so we can all imagine. But I think once they were they were through the slats, you know, you just couldn't, mm-hmm. you couldn't get him back out. It's you like know? sometimes when, like, your mailbox key or something gets stuck in a weird... <laughs> it's, like a, like, it's like a crab <laughs> trap. Yeah, it's right. just like... You can go in, you the, can't come out. Yeah, like the, the key stuck. Or the Chinese finger puppet. You know, you right. stick your finger in, the harder you pull, the tighter it gets. Yeah, All right, so we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! All right, you get caller nine on the line right now, 844-999-OLA. We've got Profile This coming up in minutes. Hola, the shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.